then you're at a start of a long lasting trend. So think about trends over time. Um, uh, don't want to go too far back in history, but think about the trend of a smartphone and how long that's lasted and all the different iterations that have been in there. You've, you've had Blackberries, um, you've had Google phones, you've had iPhones, which has become very dominant. Um, and then the trends of improving, let's say, the iPhones or the Google phones over time. So there are seven trends that provide opportunity. There's a wearable trend, a green environmental trend, uh, the payments industry, uh, a maker trend, a mobile trend, a health trend, and the Internet of Things, smart devices, which we were talking about a second ago. So what are some sources of some new ideas? Some of the most fruitful, fruitful sources of ideas include Consumers themselves, so kind of studying consumers and seeing what problems they have and how you can solve them, or, you know, heaven forbid, you actually ask them, which we'll do an assignment in this course. Um, existing products and services and how they might be changes, uh, might, might could be changed or improved. Um, the distribution channels, how people get their products and services. Uh, the federal government's a massive customer out there. Just look at federal spending, goodness gracious. And research and development, so coming up with new ideas and inventing perhaps new trends. So what are some methods for generating new ideas? Um, a focus group is, is controlled by a moderator leading a group in an open, uh, in-depth discussion. So it's putting perhaps some of your target customers in a room and, talk, and talking with them uh, in a focus group. Brainstorming allows for greater creativity in a group exercise. That's where I'm going to put you in groups in this class, and then you're allowed to come up with great ideas. Now, one of the biggest rules of... Uh, the early stage entrepreneurship creative process is no criticisms allowed. Uh, what this means is you're overly positive, nothing's a bad idea, some things may be in poor taste, but you allow everyone to get every idea out there without criticizing or shooting them down. Let's put everything on paper, let's put everything up on a board and have the discussion. Uh, free willing within that is, is uh, encouraged. And the quantity of ideas is desired. You, you want to put a ton of things out there and then you can start to make connections between them. Um, sometimes you can take a product or a service and combine it with another product or a service, and that can lead to improvements in ideas. So you can take a product, you know, two different products and put them together. Um, you can, I mean, that's how we got s'mores. I mean, come on, that's a good idea. Uh, or you can take an existing product or service and find a way to improve it. So any of those types of ideas are highly encouraged. Um, there's also brain writing, um, which Spellcheck doesn't like here, uh, is a written form of brainstorming. I call that mind mapping, where you put one idea in the center of a page, put a circle around it, and then draw all these lines off of it um, to, to separate ideas, and you just build and build and build until you fill the page up. You want to put it all out there. Um, problem inventory analysis, so you can look at all these different lists of problems. I once took a graduate level um, course much like this, but it was all on creativity. And like the first assignments, I had to write down 100 problems I saw in the world. And I had like a day to do it. And that's actually, honestly, I thought it was going to be really difficult, but I found myself writing well more than 100 problems. So uh, problem inventory analysis is similar to a focus group, but members focus on product problems rather than new ideas. So things that are going on in the world that, that are problematic. Creative problem solving is also important. Brainstorming, again, is the most widely used technique. Reverse brainstorming is similar, but criticism is allowed. Uh, it's you know, try, try not to get, get rude. Um, I, I, I recommend you start out with the first brainstorming, but if you then want to pick things apart and take things off the list, you can do it that way. The Gordon method slowly reveals the problem to group members and asks for suggestions. My suggestion to you would be do the reading and learn more about the Gordon method. The checklist method, method is a list of questions to guide the direction of developing entirely new ideas. You can establish a framework from which to create new ideas. Free association is, simp is a simple method of creating a chain of ideas and tying them together. Forced relationships tries to force product combinations. Um, trying to put two different unrelated things together and see what you can come up with. Uh, the collective notebook method asks for written suggestions. So you just got like a little notepad in your pocket at all times and you write things down, whether they're problems or ideas or that type of thing, and you go back and review them later. Attribute listing looks at problem attributes from various viewpoints. So um, you could do a little bit of, of crowdsourcing there in terms of, hey, what, what do you think of this problem and, and, and what attributes 
would you like to see in a service that solves this problem? The big dream approach asks the entrepreneur to think big. I mean, that's, that's a little broad, but you know, if you were not restricted by money or resources, um, dream big. Uh, what's your big dream approach? How could you solve the problem? Parameter analysis involves parameters and creative, creative synthesis. So uh, let you go through those one by one in the reading. Innovation is key. Um, in fact, it's so key, it's the name of this course, um, Innovation and Value Creation. But innovation is key to economic development of any company, and it's also key to the survival of any company. So this innovation is a type based on um, the uniqueness of an idea, you can have breakthrough innovations that are unique and uh, often establish a platform of which future innovations are developed. Think, think like the airplane, all right? That, that took some gumption to be on the first airplane. Um, technological innovations occur more frequently and offer advancements in the product or market. So you start out with just the airplane, now you're going to the jet airplane. And then uh, ordinary, so you know, let's, let's make the leap from airplanes and jet airplanes to Spanx footless pantyhose, because that makes sense. Ordinary innovations occur most frequently and usually extend the product into a better product. And that's the example of an improved pantyhose. Um, so, yeah, go with that. You can innovate in terms of big picture, you know, hey, air travel, yay. Even faster air travel. Or you can take something that's everyday like pantyhose and voila, you have a company called Spanx, which the founder of that just sold for a ton of money. So good for her. Uh, product uniqueness. Entrepreneurs define a new product or uniqueness of a product. So uniqueness may be a consumer concept. Like it could be just, you know, wow, this is really unique. It, it kind of gets a hook into them. The change may be in the product itself. The product may be just repackaged, which I feel like the cereal aisle does continuously. The product may only have minor improvements, which I feel like the cereal aisle only, you know, does regularly. So the, the product may simply be similar to a competitor's product. Think of your... Um, Android-based phones versus your iPhones. They just kind of go back and forth on different um, unique features for each one. They try to differentiate. New product classification. New products may be classified from the viewpoint of a consumer um, of the firm. So uh, consumers may look at how much behavioral change or new learning is required. So is it like a whole other category? Is it just one advance of an existing category? Continuous innovations require no new learning or behavior change. Think about every time you get a new smartphone. Dynamically continuous innovations require some relearning. So it's like jumping from the BlackBerry to a smartphone and or flip phone to a smartphone. Discontinuous innovations are truly new and rare. That's where we see the creative destruction that we've talked about in previous lectures. Firms may view newness by differences in technology used or the market served. So changes in technology may range from no change to brand new. So there's kind of a sliding scale of little incremental changes like, hey, this is basically the same device just a newer version, or wow, this is completely changed, so it's like a whole new device. Changes in markets range from the same market to a new market, so you could be selling to the same market, or you could be branching into a completely new market. Complexity increases with the changes in both dimensions. So if you're going into a completely new market with a completely new product or service, then you're going to have a lot more complex changes. Uh, think about if you change a job. So if you, if you worked at somewhere for a long time and you just got another job, you already knew the, the establishment. So that's kind of like a new position within the same organization is going to draw parallels there to a product. So like, hey, this is a, you know, I've always used iPhone, but now they have all these new features. Um, versus, wow, I'm switching from an iPhone to an Android and so it's a brand new product, and I'm going to be using it in a new way. So one of those changes is more complicated than the other. Now, how do we rep recognize opportunities? So some entrepreneurs recognize a business opportunity either fundamental that are fundamental to the entrepreneurial process. The key lies in knowledge, so understanding something at a higher level than most people, and experience as an entrepreneur. A lot of entrepreneurs get involved in businesses, gain experience in an industry, and start looking at problems within that industry and say, hmm, what if somebody solved this problem? And then they branch out and start their own. So the important thing, a lot of people think entrepreneurship is sitting there waiting on an idea. No way, man. Entrepreneurship is action. Get out there. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs take a job to start and they end up solving a problem in that industry that ends up being their own thing. So you have to be alert and you have to network um, with opportunities. Or, or, you know, these are important factors. So an opportunity analysis plan is a good method for assessing each new idea. This is not a business plan. 
make no mistake, we're going to do a business plan in this class. But opportunity analysis helps you decide whether you want to pursue an idea. So you need to be able to go from, hey, these are possible ideas we can do, and then eliminate it back down to, these are possible opportunities I think are worth pursuing. Because not every idea is going to be worth pursuing. As you go through this ideation process in the course right now, where you're trying to figure out, hey, we form up our groups, we have all these different business ideas, which one should we pursue? Uh, you're doing this opportunity recognition right now without even thinking about it. So product planning and development process. Ideas are refined through the production planning and developmental um, development process. It's divided into five major stages. This is where the reading starts talking about how you process results in the start of a product life cycle. This evaluation criteria must be all-inclusive and quantitative. Okay, So you, you, you kind of go through this, and again, you're going to have to do the reading. These are like 30,000-foot overviews. Um, to try to help you pull everything together. But a market opportunity and adequate market demand must exist. It must be an opportunity to pursue something. You can evaluate the current, current competing producers' prices and policies for the impact on the market. That's something in the past when I've taught this class, people have kind of gone light on. They didn't, they proposed something that's already out there and then didn't differentiate why the customer would choose your product or service over what they already know is out there, which already has a reputation. So why would they switch? Uh, new products must have synergy with the existing capabilities. You need to do a complete resource survey of like, hey, here's the things we have. Here's our strengths, our weakness, opportunities, and threats. Um, how do these things work together to push us towards success? New products should have support and contribute to the final financial well-being of the people in the market. I'd also say be God-honoring and um, serve God's will for your life and create human flourishing. Um, you need to evaluate... Uh, <clears throat> compatibility with the existing machinery and personnel. What do you have? How can you convert that? If you've been making refrigerators and now all of a sudden you're going to make dishwashers, how does that work uh, if you're a company? Uh, and evaluate an idea throughout its evolution throughout the market. So continuous improvement and looking for innovation. Now let's look at the five major stages of product development. Stage one is the idea stage. Identify promising new products or services and eliminate the impractical ones. Again, Think positively to start, but then start marking things off later. Determine the need for a product or a service. I'm adding services in here too. And its value to a company. Stage two, concept stage. The, the refined idea that you've kind of narrowed down in, sta in stage one is tested to determine a customer acceptance. That's why we will reach out to some potential customers in this class. And I need those survey results. We'll, we'll do that in a subsequent um, discussion. And then stage three, product development. Consumer reaction is used to change the physical product or service, and or what changes need to be determined. What what changes need to occur so you determine that. Stage four, test mar the test market marketing stage provides actual sales results, which indicates customer acceptance level. Um, that will be something that you're really on the precipice of being able to do once you have your complete business plan in place. So if you imagine if this class had a second class behind it, it would be testing stage four and five. Uh, commercialization where you put the product or service out there now e-commerce and business startup that's a big thing these days e-commerce needs to be assessed throughout the evaluation process how can you distribute this product or service to your customers and, and the wonderful thing about the internet is that as an option now so um, like never before you'll be able to reach a truly global market if you want to use e-commerce create uh, creatively uh, creatively I should say Use full insourcing, full outsourcing, and a hybrid or a hybrid approach. Um, let you read about those a little bit in the text. Front end activities include anything that the customer interacts with. So, what are they going to see? What are they going to feel? What are they going to touch? What are they going to smell? Et cetera, et cetera. So, if you're you know, running a restaurant, um, what do you want the experience to be for them? Then there's back end activities, which includes like the back office stuff like IT, payment search, order for fulfillment, supplies, etc. E commerce channels include websites, um, that's kind of your storefront online, dedicated mobile opti uh, optimized websites, and apps. So if your website can only be pulled up on a desktop, you're in trouble um, because most people look at it from their phones now or through an app. Um, if your website gets pulled up and still looks mobile, that's probably preferable. Ideally, you'd have both. But it would be preferable to have a more mobile website because that's where a lot of the people are going to be looking at it versus a desktop-only website. E-commerce is essential today. It's, it's just expected. Uh, website, email, um, app even um, are just fully expected. Now, this was a very broad, high-level overview of Chapter 4, Creativity 
in and the business idea, which is kicking off section two from idea to opportunity. I will see you in chapter five.